I bought a refurbished Xbox 360 from Lukey Games for $140, and in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at it and see if they actually refurbished anything. So we got the box here, as you can see, it is from Lukey Games. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. And I bought a few accessories as well. Oh, wow. At first glance, that packaging is interesting. We got a random layer of bubble wrap here. So I bought GTA 4. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. I also bought the GTA 4 strategy guide, just just cause, uh, just to check it out. Both were reasonably priced. We also have a controller here, which it is third party. Not surprised about that. The uh, the listing again was not like super clear that it was gonna be third party, but it was a lot more clear than, than DK Audis was. Um, I, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. Now we have some packaging. Go to the side, we've got an AV cable. Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> uh, let's see if we have an OEM power brick and I think I think we do looks oem we've got a 175 watt that's a good sign that means that we probably have a somewhat newer 360 if it was a 203 watt it probably would have been like the og one without a hdmi port we've got um that's just my packing slip and we have some syncing procedures here turn on your 360 blah 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 console one wire controller power supply av cable or hdmi and then here is the console and let's see what's here and dude i, th I think they sent me the wrong power supply this is disappointing. All right, so we got 360 here. You can see it's the <laughs> original model. Man, this is the same thing as DK Oldies, where they, they're not clear on what model they're going to send you. It's just kind of up to chance, and they say 360. I knew it was going to be an old white 360, but that can mean a Xenon motherboard, which is the really old one that Red Rings of Death basically like guaranteed at some point. You've got Falcon. You've got the newer one, which is Jasper, which is the most reliable one, but only having an AV port from 2006. This thing is old, and... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this power supply is not gonna work. Let's go ahead and test it out real quick because this power supply is for a Falcon, I'm pretty sure. Let's just look at that. Doesn't fit. Let me show you why this doesn't fit. So there's a few different power supplies for 360 because the original power supply needed more power and they made it so that you can't use the underpowered ones on the original consoles so that you don't, you know, underpower the console, obviously. So to do that, they put different like kind of little bars in here. So there's a little bar right there in the center. And if you look closely at this power supply or this power supply slot, there's a little uh, little block in the middle. So those two collide and you can't actually plug it in, which is good because you don't want to underpower the system, but bad in my case, because they sent the wrong power supply. Whew. Dude, what is going on with these companies? Why can nobody get anything right? I mean, like I get this is a simple mistake, but like it's also a simple mistake that should not be happening. Like all you got to do or you just got to do one check when you send it out plug it in and see if it actually plugs in and if it if it doesn't then you know you have the wrong power supply <sighs> all right guys but uh let's just take a closer look at this thing and see what's up with it so actually first of all we're going to take a look at this strategy guide in the game uh the strategy guide looks like it's packaged pretty well <laughs> it barely fits how do i even get this out of here it's like i don't know how they even got this in here it's shoving this bag so tightly wow all right so here's the guide i just you know i just wanted to try it out and see what they would send me very nice condition it was like 10 bucks, not bad. We also have GTA 4 for the 360. I uh, bought the complete in-box version. It's in nice condition. Check out the, the disc here, and it looks pretty good. I don't see any scratches. Cool. So, game... Oh, I do have a partially broken case here. Oh, nice. Not a big deal, but, like, uh, honestly, that case is probably broken. You can see a broken piece there. Probably broken because the packaging was insufficient. I'll just put it that way. There was not enough packaging in this thing. And then back to this console. So as you can see, it is a 2006, 2006 console, which is not a good thing uh, because first of all, no HDMI. Uh, second of all, it's pretty much guaranteed to get Red Ring of Death at some point. The chances that this console has been repaired at some point is pretty high. Um, now let's go ahead and check out this hard drive. It should be a 20 gig hard drive. That's what I ordered. Uh, looks like it's OEM. That's a good sign. Now looking back at the front, uh, looks pretty good. Nothing, nothing crazy there. Surprisingly, all the flaps are intact and top looks pretty good bottom looks pretty good uh i got some fingerprints or whatever but now the other thing i want to do is take the faceplate off of here and see if we can figure out if this thing's been opened before and indeed it has been opened so um, you can see the warranty sticker used to be there and it's gone now so this console has been opened up at some point and probably repaired or cleaned out i don't know what they did to it but uh we'll find out later first thing we're going to do is plug this thing in and see if it even works and actually i'm gonna have to use my own power supply because as you saw <laughs> They gave me the wrong one. That's that's actually really bad. Like the fact that they gave me the wrong power supply in a non HDMI console, not good. Now uh, I forgot to forget about this wire controller. I did, to be fair to them, 
they said wired controller in the description and the photo showed this wired controller. So like uh, no, no gripes there. Um, still disappointed to get a wired non OEM controller for 140 bucks, but um, it is what it is. All right, so now I have this console plugged in with my own power supply since the one that came with it does not work. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. Ooh, <laughs> I turned it on and the uh, disk drive made a nasty noise, but it is booting up. And dude, this might be, oh, no way. This is on an old dashboard. Hold up, hold up. I think this is NXC. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is on NXC and the disk tray doesn't open. <laughs> dude. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it got stuck the first time. Um, but if it gets stuck once, it's going to get stuck again. But wow, I, I'm baffled. I can't believe this is actually on NXC. Pretty cool. Well, let's get, see what exact dashboard we're on. We're on 2.0.8955.0. And I was going to log into this thing and, you know, uh, connect to the internet and, and log into my gamer tag and stuff. Obviously, I'm not going to do that now because I don't want to upgrade NXC. And uh, speaking of gamer tags, did you know that your gamer tag and associated personal info can actually be leaked on the dark web? My Xbox gamer tag information was actually leaked on the dark web back in 2021, and I had no idea that even happened until I started using Aura Security recently. And Aura Security is the sponsor of today's video. So what is Aura? Well, Aura is an easy to use app that includes everything you need to stay safe online. And one of the coolest features about Aura is you can put your gamer tag into their system, and then their system will notify you whenever your gamer tag is found on the dark web, uh, because if it is, yeah, that's uh, not good. So one of my favorite features about Aura is they help you fight back against those annoying websites that make your personal information public by automatically requesting removal of your info, uh, which helps reduce robocalls. I just checked and over the last two months that I've had Aura, they've already sent over 20 opt-out requests to different data brokers that have my info. But Aura does so much more than just that. They give you near real-time alerts on suspicious credit inquiries. They have a VPN that allows you to stay anonymous online. They protect your devices from viruses. They help you manage what your kids can do on their devices. And they even have a password manager. Now, I'm sure you already have an app that does maybe one of those things, but with Aura, you can do all of those things in just one app. So let Aura do the hard work for you. They'll keep you safe online. And if you use my link on the screen right now, you'll get a two week free trial. And trust me, you'll be shocked at how much private info Aura finds on the web during those two weeks. So go to Aura.com slash JRob or scan the QR code on the screen to get your two week free trial today. So I'm still kind of baffled that this thing is on the NXE dashboard. Uh, let's see if there's any games on here or anything. It looks like they did wipe it at least, but they didn't go back and do the initial setup because if they had gone back to system settings, and clicked initial setup, it would have made me do the, you know, the initial setup. I didn't have to do that, which is fine. The initial setup for the 360 is basically nothing, but it's just, it's funny. It's on NXC. Um, honestly, I think for 90% of people that are buying a 360 probably don't care. They just want to play all their games, which you can't actually do on NXC because any, any games that are later than the NXC uh, won't work unless you update the dashboard. But let's go ahead and just try a game ourselves. So we got GTA 4, which I bought straight from Luki Games. So we're going to test it out here. And luckily the, the disk drive is actually opening each time now we'll take a closer look at it when we open this thing up let's go ahead and see if this game reads because the uh disk drive sounds a little bit suspect so gta 4 is loaded up i started playing the story for a few minutes working fine so far i'll do a more extended test later but for now i kind of want to go back a little bit more down the nostalgic path of of memory lane let's just uh take a look at the middle section right here and, and this just brings back so much memories or so many memories you know when you press the, the home button in the center it'll bring up this menu in the middle and uh this is back in like you know 2009 2010 maybe um, when I played the 360 the most. So this is the dashboard I remember the most. Uh, very nostalgic, kind of just looking at the color scheme, the, the whole, uh, the way it's presented. Uh, I don't know, it just brings back memories. I know it does for probably a lot of you guys as well. And uh, yeah, the console's working so far. It is a little bit odd because the heat coming out of here is pretty hot, which means that um, the heat trans is transferring pretty well from the heat sink, um, or excuse me, from the chip to the heat sink which is unusual for a console this old. Usually these consoles, if you haven't replaced thermal paste, um, it's gonna be, sh it, the, the fan's gonna go crazy and it's not gonna put out much heat. But honestly, at first, at first thought, it seems like maybe they did actually replace the thermal paste here. I don't know, maybe they did a bolt mod or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on inside of here, but it's, uh, the fans have not ramped up as much as I, as, as much as I'm used to on a console this old. All right, so we played the console for an hour or so. Uh, didn't have any issues, it worked fine. Uh, well, uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but it, it, it didn't red ring a death. Uh, and the interesting thing is it was blowing out really hot air and the fans were actually not ramping up that much, which is weird to see on a console this old. Now, something else to note is on the right here, I have my old DK Oldies 360 that I bought a couple months ago. This is the one from Luki Games. And you'll notice that it's actually pretty yellow, uh, kind of hard to tell, but uh, just something to note, not a big deal. Um, just just kind of interesting. Now, the one issue I had with the 360 is when we would... Uh, play a game and or play GTA 4 
and when it would go to a cut scene or a loading scene or something, the, the disk drive would make like an awful noise. Like it would, it sounded like it was about to blow up or break or something. Um, now I tried a different 360 game on it and it seemed to not have the issue. And then looking closer at the uh, GTA 4 game, it appears that we do have an issue. You'll, it's probably hard to see on camera, but there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know what you call that there, but on this side, you can kind of tell it's a crack. Again, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little crack right there. And then the, the data layer just looks messed up there. And we, we think that's the reason for the GTA 4 making those weird noises whenever it's loading up. So, um, and that's a, that's a game that the Luki Games sent me. Now, to be fair, that's really small. I didn't even notice it. Yeah, probably shouldn't send out games like that. But at that point, you can't really fix those games. So let's go ahead and open up this console and take a look at the inside. Because I'm very interested to see what they did in here. My first guess is that this console was a, repaired at some point and thermal paste was replaced at some point. I don't know if it was by Luki Games or somebody else, but we're about to find out. So I finally got the bottom of the console off and we noticed something interesting out here. I see some more streaking that looks very similar to the streaking I saw on the PS3 on the inside. So I think again, they used whatever kind of cleaning this solution they used on the outside, uh, use way too much liquid and then it leaks on the inside, which is uh, not good. Like this stuff could leak into the components. And I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty bad there. There's a lot of stuff going on there. I'm not a fan of them doing that. I don't know why they do that. It, it, there's plenty of cleaning solutions that work that don't have to be done like that. But looking at this, I actually see all of the original screws, I believe, which is, oh, nope, missing one right there. Yeah, I'm missing one. Okay, so uh, just kind of interesting to look around and see if there's missing screws because that's just another indication that something's been done inside. So they've definitely taken it apart before or somebody has. Uh, let's keep going. All right, so I got the, uh, the screws out that I need to. Should be able to take the top cover off now. Let's see what's going on down here. And boom. All right, that looks pretty clean. Uh, again, we do see some of that, that liquid that's leaked down in there. I mean, it's not it's not bad at all, but there is a layer of dust. And then let's go ahead and see what the inside of this thing looks like. All right, so we got the uh, Hitachi LG uh, drive, which is very loud, by the way. Uh, let's go ahead and pull that out, and I'll take the cords out there. Uh, but the drive looks good. I believe it has been opened up before because there's usually little piece of tape somewhere on here that's kind of like the the warranty for it um, and I don't see that anymore but let me go ahead and actually I kind of want to open this all the way up so let's let me, let's put that to the side and we'll open that all the way up later now looking in here let's take this dust cover off or whatever you want to call it that's a bit dusty uh, it's pretty dusty in there now looking at the fan I'll probably just take a close-up picture and show it to you guys but it, it does look a bit dusty again nothing too crazy all right so fan all the way out and it's a little bit dusty not I mean not much at all it's def oh it's got some I'm trying to, i can't decide if that's leakage from that that solution or what but um <laughs> that solution they use is wrecking havoc but uh, i mean the board itself looks fine i don't see any kind of uh, anything crazy just just taking a quick glance at it so now we're gonna take eight more screws out lift up the heat sinks and take a look under those to see if they've replaced thermal paste so let's go ahead and take a look all right so actually i forgot i had to take off a bunch more screws in the bottom so i can lift up the entire motherboard and then we can take the X clamps off and then take a look under the heat sink. So let's go ahead and lift this motherboard out and see what it looks like underneath. I'm curious if they did a bolt mod or anything here. And nope, we still got the X clamps. That's actually a little bit surprising. I'm just gonna put that to the side. And then we gotta take these dang X, X clamps off. Let me know down below if you've ever taken an X clamp off. Um, it, it gets easier over time, but it's still a pain in the butt. Let's go ahead and take these off and see what it looks like underneath. All right, first X clamp is now off. Still holding the heat sink underneath. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal. Three, two, one, and here we go. And oh, I think that's new heat, a uh, new thermal paste. I'm gonna have to compare because this I haven't taken too many of these 360s apart. You know the, the OG ones. I'll have to compare it to my last DK Oldies video because that one was the same model. Um, and I'll have to see if this this thermal paste is similar. But that looks somewhat fresh. I'm not sure how fresh, but it does look like it's not the original factory, which is a uh, Good sign. Did Luki Games actually refurbish this console? Wow. Let's go ahead and take this one off and see if we see the same thing. All right, second X clamp is now off. Let's go ahead and take this apart. And yeah, same kind of thermal paste there. This one again, uh, I don't think that's OEM. I think somebody has replaced this at some point. Let me look at some pictures and uh, I'll see if I can make a decision. Yeah, so I looked at some pictures and some old videos of mine. And I, I do think this is new thermal paste. I don't think this is factory. Um, it really doesn't look like factory at all. It's actually covering the entire uh, chip. Excuse that little bald spot there because I put my finger on it. That's the other test I used. I kind of rubbed my finger on it and it actually 
moves. You can actually remove it with your finger, which is, in my experience, not typical with the factory thermal paste for, for Xbox 360s. And honestly, this makes Luki games even more... I don't know, sketchy is not the right word, but more... Um, it's just a bigger mystery because that first PS3 I got from them was clearly not refurbished. Now, this one appears to actually be refurbished, like cleaned out, thermal paste removed. Now, they still use the, the cleaning solution on the outside that uh, gets in the inside of the console. And like, I mean, the console wasn't wiped down perfectly on the inside, but it was, it was pretty dang good. Um, now, the last thing I want to do is open up the, uh, the disk drive and see what they did in here because it does appear that it's been opened before. All right, now looking inside of this disk drive, it does appear to be very clean, which is actually kind of un uncharacteristic for these things because these things accumulate dust like crazy. Um, now, these parts are yellowed a bit, not sure why, but the rubber band here, which is uh, what activates, basically essentially com completes the mechanism to uh, eject the disk drive. And that's usually, when a disk drive sticks, it's usually because this thing is really dirty. But the rubber band here looks very clean. The inside looks, inside looks clean. I don't know if they like re this uh, this bar right here. I don't think so, but it is working with no problem. So nice, like a... Uh, I, I am surprised. But all right, Lucky Games, I, I see you. You're, you're, you're in town. You're, uh, I'll, I'll buy some more consoles from you guys and see what's up. I don't know if this one was a fluke or the PS3 was a fluke, but I'll give this an 8 out of 10 in terms of refurbishment because it actually was opened up and cleaned and uh, thermal paste replaced. Now, of course, we got the power supply that was incorrect, so that's a big downer. Um, uh, I'm sure if, if I contacted them, they'd send me the right one. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it's a mistake. Mistakes happen. Um, but, it, you know, it should be something with that. That, that sheet of paper they have that with a checkoff process that should be fixed there. But again, not a huge deal. Um, now, of course, this console was overpriced. 140 bucks is pretty steep for a 360, especially the original one. That's the other disappointment here is they didn't tell me which 360 I was getting. And of course, they sent me the one most prone to Red Ring of Death. But just take it as you will. You know, in terms of refurbishment, I think it was pretty good. In terms of the listing, I think it was still... Uh, listing and pricing is still pretty bad. Like, that's like a 3 out of 10 because um, it's not very clear. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And let me know down below what you guys think.